Yes, well, uh, Salieri did variation on La Follia, mm. and uh, in a more gifted way, I think a bit of those variations, because uh, he concentrates on on orchestral colors, mm. and that's what happens in your variations. Mm -hmm. That you have one for just the piano, you have so much colors. Mm. You have always a sort of crescendo, mm. or you have everything forte, mm. and it remains there like mm -hmm. a big block, mm -hmm. a big block, or you do a crescendo with a culmination at the end, mm -hmm. and the culmination finishes on the dominant. Yes. Why is this? Is it, is it to put a, a question mark? Is yes, it? in a way the endings <coughs> of the variations are like springboards into the next one. So it's like if you're on a diving board, you get to the dominant at the end and then you, it launches you to the next one. Okay. That's sort of the idea. That, <coughs> so that it's like, uh, you know, in a novelist will, at the end of a chapter, they'll put something really exciting. Yes. It makes you turn the page. Yes. Um, so mm. that was the idea. Yeah. Yes. But the uh, first act is all in E flat minor. Mm -hmm. The second act is all in A minor. Mm -hmm. Why is, is that planned? Probably. A tritone, yeah, it's the ultimate sort of, yes. it's as far away as you can go, you know? Dalloway is one universe, different universe. And yeah. they, are, they are very far from each other. Yes, couldn't be further. Yeah. And La Folie was always composed in D minor. D minor, exactly. Yeah. So you have one variation in D minor. Yeah, exactly. And mm. all the rest in A minor. Yeah, sure. Now we come to the the waves. Yeah. This sort of postlude has a voice. Yeah. Is it because of Mahler? Because of your love to Mahler? I do love Mahler. Yeah, I sure, know. Of course. I know, and one feels it. You hear it, yeah, right. <laughs> Is it your love to 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 Berio and his influence on you? Because sure, I feel it has to be a voice without vibrato. Yes. It has to be like in the Berio Sinfonia. Right. Really not. One could do it with a child. One mm. could do it with a child, like Bernstein did for his mother right. with, with, yeah. mm -hmm. with, with a child. Mm -hmm. Why is this voice suddenly? Yeah, um, <coughs> well, I, a lot of reasons. Um, I wanted there to be, because the way the waves is, is made is you have all these wave-like lines, mm. all moving at different tempi. so you have this sense of... Um, uh, it's like, uh, you know, in, a, in, a, in cinema when the focus shifts deeper or, na or further forward in a scene, you know, they pull focus and your, your eye sort of goes into the picture. Mm. Um, all of these interference patterns between the waves give a kind of a sense of continual movement and shifting of perspective, um, which I think evokes a kind of oceanic feeling. You know, and the water imagery is very important in Virginia Woolf. You know, she always seems to return to the image of water as being kind of peaceful, but also a sort of a resting place. She has this in many of her works. Um, so within all of that, I wanted something for us to connect to, a human figure. Surely. You know, a female voice as part of that texture, not on top of it, but as sort of inside it. Mm -hmm. Somehow gives us a clue for uh, Virginia herself, uh, as being part of this somehow. Um, and yes, you're right, the, the, the way the voice is handled, it, it's not a soloistic vocal no. line, it's part of the instrumental texture, as in Berio, as in 